My favorite place to be is on location, doing landscape photography. But my second favorite place to be is right here at my desk with my computer, Photoshop, scanner, and printer, working on the photographs taken on my last trip. And today, uh, I've been working on a photograph of a moonrise over the sand dunes in Death Valley. This photograph was in many ways the catalyst for the trip because I had visualized the moonrise because I had seen a moonrise in Death Valley a couple of years ago on my last trip and had been unable to capture it properly. We're just leaving Stovepipe Wells and heading towards the sand dunes, which are only two miles south of uh, the village. Uh, you see them over on our left. And uh, these aren't the biggest dunes in Death Valley, but given that the Eureka dunes were inaccessible to us this week, uh, we're going to be shooting here. The big attraction for this evening is that a full moon is scheduled to rise over the funeral range uh, just around the same time as sunset. This has been walked so many times, it's like a path. That's right. One possibility is down in this, uh, in this low part with maybe some of the vegetation as a foreground interest. Uh -huh. It's not a bad idea. But that precludes using a long lens. So really, ideally, what I want is for the moon to rise over there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> behind that hole, there, behind that peak. Exactly. Why don't we head down in this way? Because there are some nice ripples. Uh -huh. Try to, you know, we yeah. get down in one of these. Uh, so maybe just over the next rise and see what happens. Go across this way. Yeah. And I wouldn't want to fall. We found ourselves on location, having hiked about 45 minutes into the dunes to get away from people and footprints and any signs of civilization. And discovered that though there were four of us and we had all planned, we thought, very well for this trip, no one had brought a compass. Compasses were all back in the trucks. But you know, get your orientation. Yeah, because we want to come out of here. Yeah. We're walking out. Uh -huh. Oh, anyone bring a compass? No. It's back in my camera bag. Oh, okay. Good place for it. Good place for it. That's where I put my split neutral density. GPS is back in the truck. Uh -huh. Yeah, mine has a handheld headphones back in. <laughs> okay, one more ridge. So there was a lot of scrambling, a lot of humor, but a lot of frustrated scrambling trying to figure out exactly where the moon was going to rise. One of our party climbed to the top of a, about a 150 foot high dune to see if he could get some perspective on it. And indeed, he was the person who was the first to spot the rising moon. And when he did, Fortunately, because we had some uh, walkie-talkies with us, uh, he was able to uh, signal us, and we were able to scramble quickly uh, to get ourselves situated and get our shots lined up for the rising moon. Look at that. That is worth six months and three and a half thousand miles of travel. What I particularly like about the shot is that there is a thin layer of cloud slightly obscuring the moon but adding a lot of texture and there is also another thin wispy layer of cloud above it catching the last pink rays of the setting sun. Because it was shot in medium format, there's a great deal of detail and texture in the sand, in the mountains, and in the moon and the clouds, which are partially obscuring the moon. So this photograph was, if you will, four or five months in the making, but I got what I set out to get. Well, it's over. I mean, the moon's real pretty now, but it was when it was right on the horizon that it was so great.
The most popular dunes area in Death Valley is just a couple of miles outside of the town of Stovepipe Wells. But because of its ease of access and popularity, the dunes are littered with footprints. This presents a real challenge for landscape photographers. I'm told that a number of times a year when a storm passes through and there are high winds, the dunes are blown clean. But I've never had the good fortune of being there at one of those times. So the challenge is, how do you get around the footprints? What I've tried to do here is in fact to incorporate the footprints into the photograph. They are indeed the photograph. I really like the way the uh, that rows, rows of footprints are going into shadow. What caught my eye was the incredible texture of the rows of footprints as they went up and down the side of the dune. And also, the different ages of the footprints. Some were obviously very fresh, and others were seriously faded. So this was, uh, this was an interesting way to pass the hour or so uh, before moonrise and sunset which was why we had gone there in the first place. We had hiked a good half hour, 45 minute into the dunes uh, in preparation for our moonrise photograph. And while we were waiting for uh, the sun to set and the moon to get ready to rise, there were some really interesting photographic opportunities. You know, my penchant for dead trees. We, found we have a little bit of dead scrub brush over here and nice shadow behind it so that it stands out. What attracted me here was the alternating bands of lightness and darkness, the striations. There is also this little bit of light. It stood in such stark contrast to, of course, the lifelessness of the desert sand dunes. So that contrast was appealing. The alternating bands was appealing, but what I particularly liked here was the row of footprints along the top of the dune, which is mirrored in the row of footprints at the bottom of the frame. So all of these things came together and provided uh, both a very abstract photograph, a uh, very graphic image, and yet a true landscape photograph because of the naturalness of the setting. The other thing that's worth noting is, of course, that this was within a half an hour, 45 minutes of sunset. And that is the time of day when you're shooting in sand dunes, uh, either that or very early in the morning, right after sunrise, because the light is at an oblique angle to the dunes. You pick up the texture of the sand, the ripples, as you can see here. And any other time of day, what you're going to find is that sand dunes are very boring, of course, not to mention hot. The tiny town of Stovepipe Wells is one of the two places to stay in Death Valley. And if you wake up about an hour and a half before sunrise, drive a good 45 minutes over dirt roads to an altitude of 7,000 feet, you'll find yourself at Agaberry Point. This is a relatively unknown lookout, and it's on the opposite side of the valley from the more popular lookout spots such as Dante's View and Zabriskie Point. But, it gives you the opportunity to shoot into the rising sun. And this is where we found ourselves the morning after the moonrise uh, evening that uh, we had shot the night before. This photograph is a very good example of a technique that I like and that I call the layered landscape, where with a long lens and the right lighting conditions, you're able to compress the uh, ranges of mountains so that they have a two-dimensional, almost cardboard cutout look to them. And although the colors in this photograph look like they're probably enhanced in Photoshop, in reality they're not. These are the real colors, and they're absolutely remarkable. This particular frame was taken probably 20 or 30 minutes before sunrise, which frequently is the time at which the light is most appealing because the light is curving around the curvature of the Earth. There is no direct light yet, and it's picking up high cloud and bouncing 
off the upper part of the atmosphere and throwing very soft diffused light, as you can see here, onto the range of mountains. Tight spot. Got the sky just above the horizon. Put that in memory. And we got the first mountain range. And there's a four-stop range there. So the average of those is eighth of a second at F8. So uh, this was a very cold and uh, high altitude morning and we weren't sure what we were going to be able to get because uh, we hadn't been to this particular locale before, but it turned out to be very worthwhile. And an added bonus is the fact that we were able to watch the full moon setting as the sun was rising on the other horizon. So this was a particularly uh, enjoyable uh, morning to do photography.